Okay, so Gina Roberts here again. Uh, we're doing another worked example for CSEC physics, and we're just going to go right into this question. So, the question here says Patrick and Patricia showed their class a magical balancing act. They sat both on one side of a uniform 6 meter plank. Patrick sat 1 meter from the pivot, located at 0 0.5 meters from the center of the plank. Patricia sat 0 0.5 meters from the pivot on the same side as Patrick. And this question wants us to do a couple of things. So the first thing that we're asked to do in this question is to label as W the point on the diagram where the weight of the plank acts. Now, in the question, it is said that Patrick sat 1 meters from the pivot. And we actually see it labeled on the diagram where Patrick sits. And it's 1 meter from the pivot. We're also told that the pivot is located 0 0.5 meters from the center of the plank, right? So the distance from here where the pivot is to here is 0 0.5 meters. So it means then that this is the center of the plank. And the question said that it was a uniform plank. So whenever we have a uniform object, the center of gravity is located at the center of that object. And we know that the center of gravity is the point on a body where it is assumed that the weight of the object acts. So if the center is right here, it means then that the weight will act at this point right here where the center is. So here is where the weight of this plank will act because it's a uniform plank. Right? So that's our, uh, that is the place where our weight will act. Now, the next part in the question asks us to calculate the weight of the plank W. So let's look, look back at the plank. So we have the plank uh, and it's in equilibrium because it says that they were performing a balancing act. So the plank is right now balanced. So we say that uh, it is in equilibrium. Now we know that for a system in equilibrium we can say that the, the sum of the clockwise moments I'm going to write now so for a system, a system in equilibrium, room, the sum of the clockwise moments about a point is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about that same point. Alright, so what we're essentially saying is that this system that is right now is in equilibrium. The sum of the clockwise moments about this point would be equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about this point. Now, if we look at our diagram here, uh, we will have the weight of this object acting downward, right? So the weight will be acting downward and it will cause a clockwise turning effect. Similarly, the weight of Patrick is acting downward and it will cause an anti-clockwise turning effect. Likewise, that of Patricia is acting downward on this side, so it will cause an anti-clockwise turning effect. So we have two anti-clockwise turning effects and one clockwise turning effect. And again, those turning effects are taken about this point, which is where the object is pivoted. So we can then set up an equation relating those two uh, turning, eff turning effects based on our expression here. So I'm going to just erase here so I can have some space. And I'm going to write this, sim this uh, in symbol form. So we're saying that for a system in equilibrium, the sum of the clockwise turning effect is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise turning effect. So again, if you look back at our diagram, the weight of Patrick and Patricia 
will cause an anti-clockwise turning effect and the weight of the plank will cause a clockwise turning effect. So we can set up an equation here. So we can say F1 times D1 is equal to F2 times D2 plus F3 times D3. So we have one clockwise turning effect and then we have two clockwise turning effect. So F1 times D1 will be our clockwise turning effect. F2 times D2 will be one of our anti-clockwise turning effect. And F3 times D3 will be our another clockwise turning effect. So we can now fill in our values now. So we'll say that the force that will cause the clockwise turning effect is due to the weight of the ruler. So we can say F is W, which is the weight of the ruler. And the distance, which the weight act from the pivot is 0 0.5 meters. So we say W times 0 0.5 meters is equal to F2 will be the weight due to Patricia. And that's 400 newtons and that acts 0 0.5 meters from the pivot. So we'll have 400 newtons times 0 0.5 meters plus the weight due to Patrick and that's 500 newtons and that acts 1 meters from the pivot. So we'll have 500 newtons times 1 meters. So we can now simplify this when we have 400 times 0 0.5 we'll get 200 newton meters plus 500 times 1 gives us 500 newton meter. When, and this will remain the same, so we have W times 0 0.5 meters. Now we're interested in finding W, so we can actually divide both sides by 0 0.5. So we'll divide this by 0 0.5 meters, and we'll divide this by 0 0.5 meters. Now when we work this out, we'll get that W is equal to 200 plus, uh, 200 plus 500 gives us 700, so we'll have 700 newton meters divided by 0 0.5 meters and when we simplify this we will get that the weight of the ruler is 1400 newtons right so that's the weight of our ruler 1400 newtons now if we look further at the question it says that uh, if patrick sat alone on the plank calculate where he would have to sit if to have to maintain his magical balancing act. So to do this, we can actually set up the plank again. So we have the plank, right? And the weight, W, is 0 0.5 meters, 0 0.5 meters from the pivot, right? And we have Patrick on this side, right? And the weight of Patrick again, let's just double check. Patrick weight was given as 500 newtons. So Patrick weight was 500 newtons. And we calculated the weight of the ruler uh, as 1400 newtons. So now we need to find out uh, where Patrick will have to sit to ensure that this is in equilibrium. So again, the weight of Patrick will cause an anti-clockwise turning effect. So we can write that the sum of the clockwise turning effect is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise turning effect. So again, the weight of the ruler is 1400 newtons times 0 0.5 meters and that is equal to 500 newtons times D2. So 1400 times 0 0.5 is 700 newton meters. 500 times D2 gives us 500 newton, me newton times D2. Now we can divide both sides by 500. Divide this by 500. Uh, this is newtons. So we'll get that D2 is equal to 700 newton meters divided by 500. Now when we work that out using a calculator, we will have 700 divided by 500 and that gives us an answer of 1.4 meters 
And that's our final answer. So again, this was Junior Roberts from realjuniorroberts.com. If there was anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please send me an email and I'll do my best to clear, clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this video if it was helpful and if others will benefit, please hit the share button so they can get access to this video. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe and the bell notification so you'll be updated whenever I post new videos like this. Thank you for watching.